Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Dave Udy. I'm the vice chair of the Duxbury Planning Board. Thank you so much for taking time out of your evenings to come see us tonight. Um, we're going to open this meeting of the Duxbury Planning Board. We're going to, um, before we get started, do we have any, we have open form. Does anyone have anything for open form that's not on the agenda tonight? Okay, seeing none. Um, we're going to get right into the community forum that we had scheduled for this evening. Um, we have Josh Fiala, who I'm going to turn the proceedings over to in a second from MAPC. Um, so enjoy, and there'll be plenty of time for public interaction with Josh and his team. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so my name is Josh Fiala. I'm with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, MAPC. Uh, good to see some familiar faces this evening. Uh, and we're here to talk to you tonight about the Envision Duxbury process, which has been uh, going on approaching two years now. So a, a good process, uh, which is coming now to conclusion. We're excited and happy to be here and talking to you about that. So we have brought a full complement of staff and planners from MAPC tonight. Uh, so maybe I'll just introduce them and they can give a wave uh, this evening and everyone that's here. So we have Sasha, Sasha Shideroff, sorry, Sasha. <laughs> Darcy Schofield, who's out there in the audience, along with Carolina Prieto, Raul Gonzalez, Joe Saki, Travis Pollock, and Anna Sengupta. So uh, we have brought all of those people here out this evening because uh, we have uh, initial recommendations uh, for the Envision Duxbury Master Plan, uh, covering all of, t all of the topics which I'll get into in this pres presentation this evening. Uh, and we uh, are both giving a presentation, but then also having an opportunity to engage with you all uh, in small groups around the information because there's a lot of it, and we figured that was the best way to get a lot of information and get your feedback this evening. So this has been a process, and, and we thank the planning board for being a part of it and hosting us throughout the process. Uh, and it's also been a part of the process with Valerie Massard and the planning department uh, focused on helping us through uh, and guiding our efforts. Uh, and we're here, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council is the regional planning agency uh, for the Boston metropolitan area. Uh, includes Duxbury and 100 other cities and towns uh, in, in about the 495 belt around Boston. So we're happy to have been a part of the Duxbury community over the past year and a half or so uh, and get to know you uh, in your community very well. So this evening, uh, we're here to uh, provide an update on the master plan process. Uh, we're closing in, as I mentioned, on a draft, a full draft plan with all of the recommendations. Uh, we're also here to share phase two work. This process has been broken into two phases. Uh, and phase two work is, is new information that most of you have not likely to uh, have seen pr prior to this evening. Uh, so we're here to talk, talk about that phase two information and focus on it. And really to invite your feedback both this evening and continuing forward uh, through the website and through meetings such as this one and also planning board meetings which will be coming up in May and June which the process will be featured at as well. Uh, the content is solidifying but it's not set yet so uh, we please do invite you to get engaged with it and help us make it better uh, over the next few months as we finalize the plan and make it as good as it can be. So tonight's meeting, I'm going to go through a master plan overview, uh, which will uh, bring you up to speed if you're just engaging with this process for the first time now, touch upon overarching themes which have crossed uh, all of the elements of the master plan, touch on this uh, briefly uh, a summary of recommendations of those phase two elements this evening. But then, as I mentioned, we're going to have more of an open house, small group discussion to get into the detailed recommendations of each of those items. You each should have a handout, which you hopefully grabbed as you came in and signed in. It looks like this. Uh, and we invite you to, throughout this evening, use it as a guide for the meeting, but also uh, to jot down notes or questions uh, and then hand them into us at the end uh, because it's very useful for us to get your opinions about your top priorities uh, for the types of topics that are being covered in the plan. Uh, but also, if you don't have a question you want to verbalize, you can certainly put it down in the form. We'll get back to you 
uh, if you leave your contact information, or if you have a comment that you'd like incorporated with the other information, we're happy to take that under consideration as well. So we have a lot of information to, to share this evening, uh, and so I'll dive right into it. The master plan overview is first. So what is the master plan? Uh, it's a strategic framework that guides the physical and economic development of the town uh, based, up, based upon the community's vision and goals. And so it's your plan, uh, it's your vision, your goals, and we've been gathering information from you uh, to build up these elements over the last year and a half or so. It's a vision, it has concrete goals and strategies, uh, and most importantly, it also uh, will have associated with it an action plan. And that action plan will fall under the goals and strategies and have specific items which various town boards or committees or other non-town entities are uh, taking forward to advance the master plan and to help uh, move the town in the direction of this overall community vision. So the master plan covers the entire town, uh, and we've been looking at patterns and trends across the entire town geography uh, and have brought forward uh, within these topic areas ideas which have certain uh, geographic concentrations, which I'll go through in, in, in detail in a minute. Uh, but this is looking at the town comprehensively, both in terms of topics uh, and the geography of the town. So that's what we're looking at. This has been the process uh, getting us to this evening. We're actually getting pretty close here. Towards the end of this timeline, uh, we've had uh, two phases, as I mentioned. We're nearing the end of phase two. We, we are moving toward, uh, right now we have initial recommendations basically for all parts of the plan. We're moving toward a fully compiled draft document at the beginning of June, and that will also be associated with the public comment period. You'll have a chance to weigh in on that document, but all the information that will be populating that document is available to look at this evening. And I've mentioned uh, the town web or the project's website, envisionduxbury.mapc.org. All of the information from this evening will be placed on that website. All of the information from past community forums is up on the website, uh, as, as well as the video uh, recordings which have been linked to it. Um, so we have all of the information really and all the analysis that has occurred throughout the process if you really want to dive in deeply to it. And the draft documents as those become available over the next couple months. Uh, will be available as well. So these are the topics which are covered in the master plan, the master plan elements as we call them. And that includes a, a general demographic and trend survey of the town, which we call Duxbury Today. That community vision, which is drafted from your aspirations and visions for the town. Housing and how housing should be uh, featured and focused as over the next 10 years, all of these elements are thinking about Duxbury over the next 10 years, historic and cultural resources, open space and recreation, economic development, transportation and connectivity, public facilities and services, sustainability, both in regard to climate and clean energy, land use and zoning, and then finally implementation. Uh, oftentimes these are called comprehensive plans because the nature of all these topics is very holistic. It's a very comprehensive look at the, the town moving forward. And we're also looking for synergies across these topics. So cross-cutting uh, areas where you can make benefit uh, several of these topic areas with a single action or a single strategy. So how have we, how have we gotten to these recommendations this evening? Uh, the plan inputs have involved uh, data collection and analysis, which we've taken from town data, but also data available to us as the regional planning agency, um, done GIS analysis, so geographic information systems analysis of detailed information around the town, demographic analysis. This is the third in a series of community forums which we've engaged with uh, members of the, uh, the public just like yourselves and gotten great feedback from each of them. Uh, we've had regular planning board meetings and discussions and presentations uh, throughout the time period of the plan. Uh, and then had discussions with individual stakeholders and interviews that we've engaged in. We've also had uh, master plan ambassadors, uh, which we engaged 
a little stronger in the phase one effort uh, and then have been included throughout the process, which are local uh, community members, committee members, and board members who have helped us think about the various topic areas. And then last uh, fall, I guess, or maybe, no, the fall of 2017, uh, there was a community survey out uh, which received over 1,200 responses, which we thought was amazing uh, and a testament to the community. And much of the information you see this evening is built upon that community survey as well. So tonight we have element summaries, and you can grab some of those as a handout uh, if you're interested in really digging into the details. Those summaries are also available on the sheets around the room, which we'll be discussing with you in those small groups. And we also have full element drafts, which will be placed up on the website uh, for you to take a look at, download, uh, and read through if you're really interested in the details of these. Uh, and that measures in, uh, you know, it's coming in a, a 100 pages plus already. Uh, with all those elements in their fully drafted forms. Uh, and then we are compiling your information and feedback this evening and adjusting as we need to as we wrap all of this up. So the structure of information in the plan and the structure of information that will be in the rest of this presentation, we will touch on the vision statement and I'll uh, summarize that very briefly and highlight some of the overarching themes that cut across the vision statement but also each of the elements and then each of the elements themselves have element goals, which relate back to the overarching themes in the vision statement. They have element strategies, which break down those goals and how they can be achieved. And then the concrete actions, which identify timelines and individual responsibilities for those actions. So all of that is a sort of descending level of detail, which is all nicely nested and consistent with each other in terms of the information that's provided. And this gives both a way for the town to set a direction, but also concrete ways to get there. Uh, and we hope is very useful as the town uh, undertakes both activities anticipated by the plan, but maybe even some that come forward in the next five years or so, or to even 10 years that weren't anticipated, but that can be looked at through the lens of the plan. This is a more detailed accounting of all this information. And I just wanna hi highlight uh, that a one sheet summary is probably your go-to item for getting a brief uh, feel for what all this information entails. So I'll step into the overarching themes and I will uh, offer an opportunity to uh, have some questions uh, at the end of the presentation before we get into the small group session. So this is, a, this is the vision statement and I know it's a, an eyesight test uh, for those sitting in the room out there. So I, I just wanna draw out some key themes that are in this vision statement. Uh, and the vision statement really sets the destination uh, for where this plan is, is pointed toward. Uh, and a few of the items in this, built into this language uh, that Duxbury sees for its future, that there's a continued prosperity uh, and a focus on its exceptional assets and that those assets would be cared for uh, and carried into the future. There's a protection of the heritage of Duxbury and the resources and open spaces of the town. And the town continues to attract families uh, and others to the beauty uh, of the town and uh, to uh, live here as residents. There's a strength and connection to assets within the town, uh, being able to move uh, between those assets, both by walking and biking. And there are vibrant and walkable neighborhood business districts uh, that build upon the historic settlement patterns of the town itself. And that ties to a few of the overarching themes which looking at all the information that all uh, these efforts have uh, built up really, uh, we've now reviewed and are able to reflect on them and think of some of the things that are tying all of, the, all of this together. So the first theme is really about change. Um, and that's that the town even as much as you might think it's not changing, uh, we've measured and looked at the ways that it has changed. And some of those changes are, are dramatic. Um, and we want to use the changes that will inevitably occur in the town over the next 10 years to positively shape where the town wants to be uh, and to use each of those moments strategically. And those changes are happening from a land use perspective. They're happening from a demographic trend perspective. And they're also happening from a climate uh, vulnerability perspective. So these are all changes which we're tracking and trying to anticipate. As an example, 
1999 master plan, which is the last time that Duxbury had a planning effort such as this occur, uh, had accounted for the land use percentages in the town. And we've done a similar accounting as best we can uh, to compare the two. And there's some noticeable changes which have occurred uh, in that time period, which is the same time period about, you know, even less that we're projecting out over the next 10 years uh, accounted for in our master plan effort here. So first thing to point out is the total developed area and undeveloped area. The two are, are obviously in relationship with each other. And that, er, that, those percentages have changed uh, in much more of the town's land area has become developed from 64% to 91% with a subsequent and related change in undeveloped area and that being reduced down to 9%. So you've seen that change happen over the last 20 years. Th that 9% und undeveloped area is also an area that could change in some way into the future. So those are the types of areas in terms of land use that we're looking at. Residential um, uses in terms of a percentage of land use have grown and that's been a part of the land that's gotten developed uh, to close to 50% of the town's land area. And then another thing to point out that the agricultural uses are one of the things that are very, have a very big impact and are very important to the town, but those have shrunk. And also a very small percentage of the town, but that have a big impact are the commercial districts. So the neighborhood business districts, those traditional centers of activity, really account for only 2% or less of the uh, land area of the town will have a major impact on the quality of life. And then lastly, the protect, protected open space has grown over that time period, which is a testament to the conservation efforts of the town. So those are the types of changes that we're trying to account for uh, in these goals and strategies. Also demographic changes. Uh, the population growth has slowed from what was being seen from the 1970s to about 2000. Uh, that population growth was almost doubling in size from around 7,600 in the 70s to uh, 1,400 in 2000. And then from 2000 to uh, 2010, it's only been about 1,000 additional residents. So you're up to about 15,000 according to that last 10-year uh, census. And in the, that slowed population growth, the age cohorts are getting older. So the population is aging. You're seeing growth in... 75 plus and 60 to 74, and then shrinking in the younger population cohorts. So that's a de demographic tr trend that is occurring region-wide uh, and that Duxbury needs to also account for in its planning and thinking about the future and the amenities and services that are provided as well. A second overarching theme uh, is that the town really is a unique world apart, and that's my own phrase. I, I feel that as I have been coming down for these visits. I think many of you identify with that as well. Um, that it's really, it does feel different when you get to the town, and it's, it's different than many of the other places in the region, uh, and that's special. Uh, but it also is dependent on its neighbors and dependent on the region at large, uh, judging on uh, commuting uh, characteristics and the, the concentrations of jobs uh, and Duxbury's relationship to those job centers in Boston and Plymouth, that relationship is strong, but then also the relationship of the town to its neighboring communities and some of the commercial centers which are available in Kingston and Marshfield. Uh, there's a relationship there that needs to be uh, leveraged and respected uh, that it, it cannot happen on its own and is dependent on the region and also uh, subject to other regional trends. So we're looking at the larger context such as the South Shore Chamber of Commerce's uh, regional development strategies and how those align with the local planning efforts here. For example, two of these items align directly with master plan objectives and goals uh, within our efforts, attracting a younger workforce that in, and making the area more welcoming to families and then promoting business startups and entrepreneurship on the South Shore. Uh, and we've so seen a great growth in home occupations or people working at home in Duxbury as a share of the workforce. Uh, and so those regional trends are aligning with some of those local trends as well. So it's, you're connected to those and need to be conscious of what others are doing so that you can also leverage the efforts of others locally. And then a third large overarching theme that we've seen show up in almost every element throughout the planning process is walking and biking. 
And that's very important. We've heard it loud and clear from many town residents. Uh, and that walking and biking is seen as, uh, we've heard a high demand for it in town. And it's one of the high benefit activities that we're seeing from a planning perspective across the region as also being uh, very vocally called for. Uh, so it's improving convenience, public health, there's property value enhancements that go along with that. Uh, and the younger generations that uh, are uh, a part of that attraction to the community see walkability as a key characteristic of where they're trying to choose to live. So you've got walkable districts today, so it's really looking at focusing on improving that walkability, making connections to those districts, uh, and improving walkability and bicycle connectivity to other assets in the town. And we have some interesting thoughts about how that can occur. We invited in one of the previous forums people to show us where those walking connections should or could want to occur. And there was pretty resounding support for this as a great start for a bicycle and walking network. And those aren't necessarily sidewalk connections, but could be off-road connections. They could be road adjacent connections, but ways to make sure that people can safely and easily get, get places locally without necessarily having a car needed to do that. Then the fourth overarching theme is really about uh, resilience and sustainability. Uh, I don't think we need a planning process or a study to tell you that this is a concern that's a concern of today, uh, but that this concern also has crossed uh, many of the strategies uh, and topic areas uh, and that we're seeing the need to address vulnerabilities show up in almost every element uh, from land use and zoning recommendations to where housing is located, how the business districts are uh, uh, protecting themselves from vulnerabilities in the future, and then uh, specifically addressing those in climate vulnerability and uh, protecting the coast, Duxbury Beach, uh, and the coastal residents which occur uh, in Duxbury itself. So all of that is included, and not to mention the shellfish in industry and the, the uses of the bay itself. And you can see some of the analysis uh, which has occurred and, and built up uh, around that, showing some of those vulnerabilities uh, and the efforts uh, both through this plan and, and subsequent planning processes which will be used to uh, really uh, focus and improve resilience in the town. And then the fifth overarching theme has really been uh, resonating around legacy and heritage in the town. Uh, and that's through uh, the historic and, historic and cultural assets, uh, the historic homes, uh, but also the environment and the co conservation efforts, which have been a strong part of the history of the town, uh, with thousands of acres of protected land, the Greenbelt system, the Bay Circuit Trail, uh, and the legacy efforts of the Duxbury Rural and Historic Society and others uh, to really carry that forward in the narratives of shipbuilding and other aspects of the history of the community uh, and making sure that those remain a center point of all of the aspects of our, our elements. So really we, we have identified those, having the ability now to look at all of the information and step back as items which reach across uh, all of uh, the items or all of the uh, topic areas. And this is one, uh, the historic and cultural assets, we've identified some clusters where those are occurring and naturally have, have identified um, concentrations of these features in the town. Uh, and those tie in with some other geographies which I'll highlight right now. So just to um, lower us a level in detail from uh, those overarching themes, but not get quite to the detail, hopefully that you'll be able to engage with information in the small conversations. I wanted to give a quick uh, drill down into the topic areas and just give you an orientation, but use a little less words on the slides and a, little a few more drawings. Uh, because I think those communicate, and it's interesting to think about the, the ge geographic location of many of these strategies in the town. So again, these are the strategies. I'm going to go through each of them one by one with a visual. Uh, so transportation and connectivity, and just touch on a goal from each one. So there are multiple goals within each topic area. I'm just highlighting one uh, here uh, just to make the point of the types of information that are included. But this is the road network in the town. Uh, the road network really is a foundation 
clearly of access to the town, Route 3, uh, kind of cutting across the town, Route 3A, the historic uh, highway access, uh, and Washington Street, the most historic of the streets in the town, uh, really form the foundation for the land uses and that relationship to transportation that occur. And the, one of the goals, the key goal here, is to create a town-wide multimodal network that relates to that overarching theme of biking and walking. And that multimodal uh, network of connections is connecting key nodes. And I'll walk through, using some of the other topics, what those key nodes might entail. But you can see here uh, a more simplified diagram of that local transportation network, the roadway network, highlighting those features of the roadway network, which really should be a focus of uh, investments and improvements, both in terms of vehicular safety, but also pedestrian and bicycle safety. And a concentration, particularly in this sort of oblong rectangle between St. George, Washington Street, Chestnut Street, and Tremont Street, where a lot of the assets are clustered. Economic development is one of the sources of those key nodes. They are, in part, the neighborhood business districts, which I have here. So the neighborhood business districts, I think it's interesting to highlight them and isolate them on a map such as this. So uh, Hall's Corner, the primary neighborhood district, uh, Snug Harbor, uh, right up there as well, and Millbrook, those really form a core cluster of those neighborhood services and amenities uh, which are uh, district, districts uh, providing them and distinct in character uh, from the, their surrounding residential environments. Uh, the others are small four corners, you know, Bonji's Corner and Tarklin, Bennett's Corner with Island Creek and Cox Corner, among others. Uh, but those are really the foundation of some of those key nodes which are being connected uh, throughout the town. And the focus here one of the goals is on distinct business district-based economic development. So really focusing on local services, local businesses, and making sure that there's a connection to the local patrons and dollars that are being spent. Another part of those key nodes and assets are the municipal facilities. And you can see them highlighted on the previous map across the town and isolated here. And those municipal, municipal facilities are also found in clusters. So there's the town hall, public safety, senior center, where we are this evening at the free library, the schools, the museums, and there's the community center, the Tarkland area. So those are civic clusters and cores. Uh, and though the goal there is to ensure that the town and school facilities meet community and departmental needs now and also as those needs shift into the future. So may, always making sure that that um, assessment and alignment is occurring. And the municipal facilities are also a focal point of the sustainability and energy goals. And one of the major ones there is to reduce municipal greenhouse gas emissions. And that's related strongly to the facilities which the municipality has under its control. And they've been doing a lot of, the town has been doing a lot of efforts around that and is a certified green community as well. The historic and cultural assets are also providing key nodes in that network of connectivity and the destinations which are being uh, connected together by it. So you can see here all of the historic and cultural assets and resources mapped across the town and some, and some key clusters which are highlighted. And one of the goals with a historic and cultural approach is to develop local capacity to manage and enhance those historic and cultural resources and providing a series of strategies and actions on how to do that. So this diagram kind of puts all of that together. Um, and this is a visual way to think about how all these ideas are coming together in the town uh, and provides a diagrammatic roadmap for how some of those ideas look together. Uh, but there's the activity core focused on the historic Washington Street where a lot of the strategies and goals are centered geographically. 
The assets and goals are also clustered in areas of development, like the Island Creek Village node, the village at Duxbury and Bay Path, uh, the Tarklin Community Center, all that cluster together. And these are areas that could be enhanced in terms of their walkability uh, in the future and could become more distinct uh, centers of activity themselves, along with Millbrook, Snook Harbor, and Hall's Corner. And the areas not showing up within those concentrations are effectively open space and housing. And the open space clusters, uh, the open space that occurs that you see in this map here, uh, one of the major goals, which is consistent with the recently completed open space and recreation plan, uh, is to protect Duxbury's natural areas and environment. And that's a continuation of really that legacy of conservation. Uh, so you can see in those areas which are currently open space and conservation, we're not focusing strategies there for development or other change, really. It's, it's focusing there on those uh, approaches of conservation and preservation which have been occurring. Similar with housing, uh, the single family housing neighborhoods which are occurring are not necessarily the focus of the housing strategy, but the focus of the housing strategy is strengthening housing options and walkability around those mixed use uh, centers which are highlighted in those clusters I've showed you. And using housing as an asset to build up the economic viability of those centers. Land use and zoning is another way to tie all of these topics together uh, with local policies, incentives, and regulations, and is really strongly focused on the zoning itself and has some recommendations for how the zoning can be aligned with these goals and the vision. Uh, one of those examples is looking at sustainability and resilience through that lens of zoning itself and uh, improving or strengthening the requirements around resiliency and sustainability for future investments, uh, both in terms of private investments and municipal investments, and thinking about things like uh, net zero energy buildings, so buildings that uh, consume as much energy as they produce locally or use through renew renewable sources. So those are the types of things that are the next generation of building, and Duxbury has been at the forefront of those efforts and, and trends as they've occurred traditionally. And then lastly, uh, we think all of this has the underpinning of uh, sustainability through the lens of climate and making sure that the resilience of the town is improved and it's in those coastal features and natural features and protections which are occurring are enhanced uh, in that one of those key goals is creating a resilient shoreline through multiple strategies and approaches. And this is ex expanding upon uh, resilient efforts which have been under, underway and resilient planning efforts will, which will continue and flow out of this plan effort as well. For example, a Snug Harbor planning effort, thinking about resilience and economic development in that uh, neighborhood business district. So I've talked a lot. Um, we really also, in addition to me talking, are very interested in having you talk to us and, and help us uh, direct how some of this information gets refined over the next month or so. Um, in order to broaden your exposure to all the goals and ideas that are, str are drafted, what we'd like to do uh, with our co full complement of staff that we've brought this evening, we're going to have each of them uh, stand in the area of their boards, uh, which are the boards themselves are the summaries of those topic areas. And they're going to give a very brief, we call it elevator pitch about what that topic, topic's recommendations are. And then we'd invite you to ask questions and give us feedback in that setting, uh, putting notes, sticky notes on the boards for any comments or questions you may have along the way. And we'll rotate, we call it musical boards, so we're going to time it and we'll, we'll ask you to move on to the next board in a kind of an orderly fashion. But I'll, I'll separate groups out in a second, but before I do that, I also wanted to give a moment in the, in the broader audience if there are comments and then also mention the other exercise we want to, want to have you do is uh, prioritizing goals within each topic. So we've given you dots. Hopefully you have dots. Grab some if you don't. But if you see a topic which is really you think should be the focus uh, or a goal or strategy that should be the focus within that topic, please do let us know that and it helps us organize all of this information 
in the final plan document. Where this is headed, just before the, any Q&A you may have it in the forum setting, again, we invite you to the envisionduxbury.mapc.org website to go through all of the information uh, that's available. We'll be integrating your comments from this evening and integrating any comments that we receive by email or phone call subsequent to this evening. Compiling all of the drafts into one document uh, is our effort and work in the next month or so. We will be visiting with the planning board on May 8th, I believe it is, uh, to review progress from that point forward. Uh, and then our goal is to, on June 11th or 12th, I forget the exact date of it, have the draft plan, the fully compiled plan available to be presenting to the planning board and handing off at that time. So between now, the end of March, and the beginning of June, this process will hopefully just be making all this information stronger, clearer, more directly relevant to what you think should be in the plan, uh, and polishing it up. And we will welcome any comments that you have between now and then uh, to improve it. That's really what this is all about, is making it a plan that you feel proud of and that will hopefully, hopefully help Duxbury be the town it wants to be 10 years out. So with that, I invite any questions if you want to have them asked in this setting. George. Our, our elementary school, Chandler, still doesn't exist on the slide. Okay. I think it's... We can't do it. The Chandler school is not on the slides that he shows up. It's not an important community center. I don't think there's much community stuff that takes place, but there are uh, this is a baseball field there. Okay. I'm sorry? Soccer field. Soccer field. Soccer field. So there is some recreational activities that take place around it. Okay. So the, the comment was that of the various assets and clusters we've identified, we haven't included the Chandler Elementary School, which does have some community focused assets, which we'll make sure shows up in the, in the information in the final plan. So that's mentioned before, and it's a great, great point, um, and we'll make sure that happens. Uh, <laughs> any other thoughts or comments in this setting? Yes. Great. And the, thank you very much. And the comment there was, we, there are two s very small uh, neighborhood business districts which aren't showing up also as uh, um, keynotes on our map, which was Osborne Store and a non-conforming uh, business use on which route? Oh, it's, it's a business district. Business district. It be a oh, I see. It is a business district. Oh. There, no, okay. <laughs> they're not looking at it as notes. They're just not putting it on there because it's not a note. It's yeah. Not we one of the notes of the core center of the town. So why it's not showing up. We'll look into it, but yeah, it it can show up on some of our asset maps. But Valerie is correct that uh, the land use diagram, which showed all of those mm -hmm. strategies compiled as a visual, really is also showing some of the priorities which show up. So it might not show all of the uh, very specific business districts if, if we haven't sort of conceived of them as one of those key nodes which you're trying to connect. So that, that could be a part of it too. Um, other thoughts or questions? Yeah. Right. 
the comment there was about uh, having some strategy or recommendation around saving large trees uh, and getting that into the approach as well. I, th I do think that um, the importance of Duxbury's substantial tree cover is a part of our climate uh, research and understanding of the town, and we have highlighted as an asset, but that could show up as a strategy, sure. Yes. Good point, and that's about uh, historic preservation and through the zoning and thinking about strategies like that. We have thought about some of those, and I'd be happy to talk to you in the land use and zoning They're portion really of it. Not very oh well, just. Yeah. Okay. So with that, I, I will invite you, since we do uh, want to respect time this evening. Uh, we'll actually break into the small groups now, uh, and we have uh, six stations up around the room, so we'll give you seven or eight minutes or so uh, from station to station, uh, and please engage with the staff members there, uh, and uh, please do get comments up on the boards, ask them questions, get clarification, and dot vote. Um, we'll let you know when it's time to shift around, but if you would, to start, if you just kind of move toward the part of the room that you're closest in terms of where you're sitting. That will help us just disperse a little bit. Um, and then if you see someone that's staying around and not talking to anyone, feel free to walk to them too. So we have, uh, maybe the staff members could just give a wave to some people too. So we've got Joe and Sasha and Travis, Darcy, Raul and Annis, and I'll be over here as well. <laughs> 